So last night we explored old Donnie's latest total meltdown and what's really interesting is he's getting major backlash from his own side of the political spectrum. So hit that like and subscribe button so we can continue to track the glorious GOP infighting. Because as we explored last night, Donald Trump seemingly for no reason, it was really over the most minor of minor issues, it was petty and childish even for Trump spent some time attacking his former press secretary, Kayleigh McEnany. But what's very interesting is that this was led to severe backlash from many conservatives, including other people at Fox, and it culminated, guys, in Trump getting kicked off an interview, not with just anybody, but with some of the biggest names at Fox, including the very owner of Fox News, who trashed Donald Trump in a live discussion between the two men over this and many other issues. And you also can't disconnect it from the fact that he continues to want to use his political pulpit, whether it's against his own side or against the people investigating him, as a tool for revenge, and how, despite the fact that he leads in the polls, he hasn't been able to really scare anybody off from running against him because no one likes him. Let's just start with some of the written reaction, because there was a lot of backlash written-wise to Trump on Twitter and other social media platforms when he attacked McEnany. I'll give you some context if you didn't see the video last night, what, what he said. Again, most childish stuff ever, and people hit him for it when they said... It says here, former President Donald Trump received backlash from conservatives and former campaign staffers on Tuesday after he tore into his former White House press secretary, Kayleigh McEnany. Trump attacked McEnany on True Social after she cited 2024 pre Republican primary poll numbers, which Trump claimed were false during an appearance on Fox News. He and it says, Kayleigh McEnany, Milktoast McEnany just gave the wrong poll numbers on Fox News, Trump wrote, misspelling the term milktoast. I am 34 points up on DeSanctimonious, not 25. Well, 25 is great. It's not 30. We covered this last night. She knew the number was corrected upwards by the group that did the poll. He continued to the post. The rhinos and globalists can have her. Fox News should only use real stars. Trump's attack on McEnany, who became co-host of Fox News, is outnumbered following her stint as Trump's White House press secretary, angered many conservatives, including former staffers from Trump's 2020 presidential campaign. Kaylee was one of the only voices defending Trump on CNN when he ran in 16. I often disagreed with her, but she was prepared, relentless, and unafraid of being heavily outnumbered. She then served as Trump's chief spokesperson when he was president. She also likes DeSantis. The result, and it shares Trump's attack on her, basically saying 99.9% .9 loyalty is nothing to Trump. And then it goes Goes further here. This is pathetic. I don't care who you are. This is unacceptable and unhinged. Reacted Blaze TV, which is a right wing source, host Chad Prater. May McEnany took bullets for this man. We have a guy in the White House destroying the country. I don't agree with that. And you go after her, it's becoming an absolute joke. And further says, and other conservatives say, Kaylee McEnany is a role model for conservative women. She is a devout Christian, devoted mother and wife, Harvard law grad, author, primetime news host, and staunch defender of America First Agenda. And she's one of the press, press, best press secretaries we've ever had. She is anything but milk toast. And it says, now Trump is attacking Kaylee McEnany on True Social. Are y'all going to turn on her too? How far will y'all go? how many Christian conservatives will he attempt to ruin in the process? And that's what, ha what happened here. It's like it's, people are freaking out over Trump's attack on McEnany. Now listen to these clips because the first couple really outline, guys, how Donald Trump is losing his mind and is consumed by revenge before him getting directly attacked on Fox News during a live interview. It's brutal stuff. And then we'll get to his live discussion with Rupert Murdoch, where Rupert hangs up the phone on him and says, we're done. And if anything, we'd rather a Democrat be president than you. Donald Trump currently faces legal peril on multiple fronts. And the strategy he often uses to tackle these issues is not a secret. He makes his enemies the enemies of his followers. He attacks them in public. He tries to ruin their careers. Sometimes he even defames them. That is the Trump playbook, and it has been for years. But now that his legal troubles have piled up considerably, Trump is making his fight against his enemies more explicit. In new reporting today, Rolling Stone magazine details how Trump is trying to go after the FBI and the Justice Department agents who are currently investigating him. 
Quote, in recent months, the former president has asked close advisors, including at least one of his personal attorneys, if we know all the names of senior FBI agents and Justice Department personnel who have worked on the federal probes into him. Trump has then privately discussed that should he return to the White House, it is imperative his new Department of Justice quickly and immediately purge the FBI and DOJ, DOJ's ranks of these officials and agents who've led the Trump-related criminal investigations. During some of the conversations this year, including at Trump's Florida club Mar-a-Lago, some of Trump's close political allies told him they are working on figuring out the identities of the FBI and DOJ staff and forming lists. So the time-tested Trump playbook is operational here in a big way, but some things, at least, are different this time around, like this. The Justice Department is not making it easy for Trump. According to Rolling Stone, the DOJ appears to be stonewalling Trump's allies, who are asking for the names of those hired by the special counsel to investigate Trump. The department is also obscuring the names of the special counsel's lawyers and personnel on official emails, according to a source with direct knowledge of the situation. Joining us now is someone who knows exactly what it is like to be a personal target of Donald Trump, former FBI agent Peter Strzok. Not only was he removed from the special counsel's Russia investigation back in 2017, but he was later fired from the FBI after more than 20 years of service. Peter, it's great seeing you. Thanks for being my guest this evening. There's really no better person to speak with. Does this reporting feel like vindication for you in, in your search to find out exactly what happened here, get to the bottom of your firing? Is it proof that Trump has a kill list? Well, Alex, I don't know that I'd call it vindication. It's certainly confirmation that what Trump did in the end of his last uh, administration, he's absolutely going to come back uh, with full vengeance the next time around. I mean, it's hard for me to overstate what an assault on the rule of law this is. It's essentially somebody who is running for president saying, if you dare investigate me, I'm going to fire you. And there is nobody out in America who should, this is something out of a banana republic. Trump, if you recall, in the past two months, has been indicted on 34 counts of falsifying business records to conceal hush money payments and found liable by a jury for defamation and battery. Despite all of that, a majority of Republicans still believe Trump would be their strongest nominee in 2024. According to a new Monmouth University poll, almost half of Republican and Republican-leaning voters think Trump is definitely their strongest candidate to beat President Biden in 2024 while another 18 percent think he is probably their strongest candidate. If you do the math there, that is 63 percent of Republican and Republican-leaning voters who think that Donald Trump is either probably or definitely the strongest Republican candidate for 2024. The Monmouth poll was conducted just as Governor DeSantis geared up to officially announce his candidacy, but it remains to be seen whether his official entry into this race will fend off other potential challengers because, so far, it hasn't. Right, you see in shots of uh, Ron DeSantis now. Yesterday, he gave a series of speeches. He's going to have 12, uh, his first stop in a 12 city tour throughout Iowa. He's going to stop over New Hampshire and come back. Uh, some subtle shots at Trump. Restoring sanity means we got every major institution in our country going on ideological joyrides. We have to be guided by reality, by facts, by our enduring principles. So, going to be three shots at common. Uh, common weaknesses of the president. They say he make things up. They say he's uh, he uh, flies off the handle. For example, for example, talking Kaylee McEnany is insane. She's one of the press press secretaries uh, ever. Uh, Dana Prino, as, as Ari Fleischer are watching too, <laughs> I'm just saying she was fantastic. Uh, but she's she's an analyst now. She doesn't work for any campaign. I also think that him going. Uh, thinks that Trump probably lost a lot of evangelical voters in Iowa because of those comments. Keep in mind, abortion right now is in front of the Iowa State Supreme Court because they, just like Ron DeSantis and Florida, have a six-week abortion ban. Ultimately, the Supreme Court of Iowa is going to decide whether or not it becomes law, but Iowa and Ron DeSantis are on the same page as Iowa, mm -hmm. whereas uh, Donald Trump. That's a tough uh, has, one, isn't it? It, 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 it is, is because it's about abortion, but at the same time, mm -hmm. to a lot of the evangelicals who go yeah. to the caucuses, abortion is very uh, yeah, important, and, and they like six weeks. Donald Trump does not. It's pretty brutal stuff, right? Like, you know, you have MSNBC really laying out that, like, this man has, like, a revenge list. And you could see it. Like, it's it, obviously we know this man is unhinged, but if you look at how he treats 
the people that were most loyal to him. How is he going to treat people he perceives as his enemy? Right? Like, how is he going to treat, like, you know, progressives? How is he going to treat people who investigated him? This man gets back into power. He's going to go on a rampage and it'll be even more terrifying because I know Trump probably wants to be king for life. But if he, if he respects the two term limit rule, then he can say to himself, I got nothing to lose. I got four years to do whatever I want. And it doesn't matter because I'm not even running again. And so I'm going to be even more monstrous and evil than I was the last time I was in power and I'm going to lock up Jack Smith and I'm going to lock up Merrick Garland and I'm going to throw the Bidens in prison and the Clintons and all of that. And of course, whether he ultimately achieves these things or not is of course a big question mark like law and order, uh, unfortunately for Trump still exists at least somewhat. But the fact that he would try is what makes him a fascist totalitarian, even if he's not ultimately successful. And then it gets to what happened with Murdoch. Because because of things like this, in a recent discussion between the two men, like a phone call between the two men, it was made clear live in a discussion that Murdoch would not back him anymore. Right? Like, that's... The, and this is why. Because he's... he's he, if, he, if he can't even be trusted to be friendly with his own side... He can't be trusted as a viable standard bearer for the American right. When it says here, Rupert Murdoch, quote unquote, made it clear to Donald Trump in recent days that his vast media empire will not support his expected run for re-election. Sources close to Murdoch told a correspondent at a British newspaper that Murdoch has spoken to the former president since the midterm elections and has told Trump that the disappointing performance of Republicans, particularly candidates of the Trumpian variety, put an end to his political career. We have been clear with Donald. There have been conversations between them in which Rupert made it clear to Donald that we cannot back another run for the White House, a senior News Corp source said. Murdoch even went as far to say that he would back a Democrat against Trump if necessary. That's it, guys kicked off Fox during a live interview, kicked off the endorsement list, all because he's a loser and he's attacking his own side in a rage. 